Hi, geometry students. I hope you're doing well. This is our second week of virtual learning together, and we are today just going to practice what we did in the notes last time, which was special right triangles. I'm going to do some practice problems with you on your 9.2 practice A worksheet, and that's all I'm going to do in this video is go over some of the answers. In some cases, there oh, the answers are also attached to the Google Classroom post for the day. So you can see them on your screen and you can write down on your own paper just to take notes. And some of them I may not go over because it's repetitive, but there are some things I'd like to explain. Okay, starting with question one. I noticed this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle and I didn't write down anything because in order to find X, all I have to do is refer to the notes or in my memory, the special right triangle relationship is that the legs are both the same, so that's why they're both called X, and the hypotenuse is always the leg times radical two. So in this case, what is being multiplied by radical two? Four is, so four must be the value of the leg. See, I'm explaining this in words because that's how we think it through, but it's, you're not really supposed to have to write something down for these problems because that's the whole idea. It's a shortcut to know that relationship. Okay. For problem two, here we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle again, and the unknown part is the hypotenuse. We know the leg is three or side of the square, the half square that we were talking about last time. But anyway, we know one of the legs is three, so the hypotenuse is very simply three times radical two, because that's the relationship. The hypotenuse is always the leg times radical two. So here's the answer, three radical two. This is the most exact answer, three radical two. If you wanna give it as a decimal, that's an approximation, because radicals of primes, like radical two, are irrational numbers that, you know, as a decimal, they never repeat, they never terminate. So if you do write down a decimal and you truncate it or terminate the decimal at all, you're actually writing down a less precise answer. So this is the answer in simplest radical form. And that's why it says write your answer in simplest form. Okay. So the third question, also a 45, 45, 90 triangle. We know the leg is five. So the hypotenuse is simply five radical two. Just applying what's in the notes. Now, the relationship in 30, 60, 90 triangles was slightly more complicated because there are three different sides, not just two different sides, but you have to remember that the short leg is what everything gets based on. The short leg times two is always the hypotenuse. So if you wanna know the hypotenuse, which is y, you just take the short leg times two. That's why y equals two. And then the long leg over here is the short leg times radical three. And that's why X is one radical three, or you could just write that more simply radical three, square root of three, however you wanna say it. Number five, it's very important to be able to identify the short leg. Here, the short leg is what we were looking for, but what we did know was the long leg. So to go from the long leg to the short leg, you have to recognize the long leg is the short leg times radical three. So if the long leg is four radical three, then the short leg must just be the four part right here in front. So the short leg is four. And from there, you can take the short leg and multiply it by two to get the hypotenuse. Okay, in number six, they've given us the hypotenuse. This is the most complicated kind. When you start with the hypotenuse, you have to divide by two to get the short leg. So 10 divided by two would be five. That's why y equals five. And then to get the long leg, multiply by radical three. Okay, question seven, there's actually a second page to show the results or all the complete solution, yeah. question seven and eight. What we're looking at here is a square. I know it's a square because of the four sides being equal and the right angle. 
So the fact that it's a square means when we cut it in half, we have our 45, 45, 90 triangle. And we are told that the hypotenuse is 11 meters. So that means x radical 2, which normally is labeling the hypotenuse in the special right triangle formula, the relationship is the hypotenuse is the leg times radical 2. So if the hypotenuse is 11 and leg times radical 2 is 11, this is the equation we have to set up. And then we basically are dividing both sides by radical 2. I made a little mistake here when I wrote this out. There shouldn't be two radicals there, just one. <laughs> and I was thinking about rationalizing the denominator to simplify the radical, but then I realized I'm not even at the final solution here. I don't even care what x equals itself. We're just trying to find the area of the square. So rather than rationalizing the denominator, let's just take this 11 divided by radical 2 that x is equal to and plug it into the area formula for a square. Area is side times side. So x times x, 11 radical 2 times itself, which is really 121 on top and square root of 4 on the bottom, because when you do radical times radical, you can multiply together the two factors under the radical. Then take the square root of 4 on the bottom of the fraction and you get 2. 121 divided by 2 is 60.5 meters squared. I know it's meters squared because area is always a squared quantity. It's two dimensions, x times x. Question 8 is an equilateral triangle with all, si all angles 60 degrees. So when we have this line drawn the mid, down the middle, we end up with a 30, 60, 90 triangle on one side. That's half of the triangle. This is a convenient piece to draw because we need the altitude of the triangle in order to calculate its area. If you remember from previous middle school math, the area of a triangle is one half base times height. This is height. So. 20 yards is the hypotenuse of a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And to get to the short side over here, we just divide that in two, which makes sense because this altitude is cutting a 20 yard side in half anyway. So it's 10. Then to actually move to the long side of the 30, 60, 90 triangle, we use the special right triangle relationship that the short side times radical three equals the long side. So that's 10 radical three. Now that we know the height of the triangle and we know the base of the triangle is 20, we just plug that in for area. One half base times height, one half 20 times 10 radical three, and it got cut off at the bottom here, but if you go back to the final answer, here it is. One half 20 times 10 radical three, which is 100 radical three. That's the most accurate answer. If you want an approximation as a decimal, you could always get that using a calculator. Okay. Now I've shown all three solutions for question nine because it really asks us three different questions here. If you're looking at this picture where the ladder is 12 feet long, that's always going to be the hypotenuse part. If the ladder reaches, um, is resting at an angle of 30 degrees, how far up does it reach up the wall? That's question A. If the angle is 45 degrees, that's over here. Question B, how far up will it reach the wall? So, and it forms just a different kind of triangle each time. If it's 60 degrees, how far up will it reach the, the wall? Um, so I've shown those three solutions. Okay, with these questions as examples, I would like you to now go to the Google form that is attached to this post and complete those answers. That is what you will be graded on for today's classroom classwork assignment um, to complete it as best you can. Okay, hope you're doing well. And I really hope that we maybe see each other sometime, I don't know, speculating 
after spring break, hopefully. <laughs> anyway, enjoy yourselves, relax, and do the best work you can under the circumstances. All right, bye-bye for now.